Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions, my name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the new eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 kits from Canakit. Now, a small bit of history, about a year ago, the Raspberry Pi 4 was initially released. At launch, they had three different variants. They all had the same hardware, except for the amount of RAM, which you could get in one gigabyte, two gigabyte, or four gigabytes. Now, after a while, they discontinued the one gigabyte version, and now they have just released a brand new flavor with a whopping eight gigs of RAM. Why do you need eight gigs of RAM in a Raspberry Pi 4? Well, we're gonna talk about that a bit later in the video, but mostly it's for pretty specific use cases and basically for power users, right? But the important thing is that when you're designing a project for the Raspberry Pi 4, you now have the option of choosing up to eight gigs of RAM if your project needs it. If your project doesn't need it, then you can still save a few bucks and go with the two gig or four gig versions, or even one of the other Raspberry Pi boards, such as the Pi Zero W. If you're interested in a detailed look at the Raspberry Pi 4 hardware, as well as information about how to set it up, make sure you check out my Getting Started with Raspberry Pi 4 video, which I will link on the screen as well as in the description below. If you are just getting started with Raspberry Pi 4, Canakit has some awesome bundles that are an excellent way to jump in. With these Canakits, you basically get everything that you possibly need to get up and running. So let's take a look at the new 8GB Starter Pro Kit and 8GB Starter Max Kits. All right, so here are two of the 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 Canakits. We're gonna start off with the Pi 4 Starter Pro Kit, and let's see what comes included here. Uh, we have some readme first instructions we have a detailed look at the gpio pins hdmi cable power adapter one of my favorite things ever this is the raspberry pi switch from canakit i love this thing i use it all the time it's so much nicer than actually pulling and plugging in the power every time you want to reboot the raspberry pi we have a cooling fan heat sinks we have a 32 gig micro sd card that is pre-formatted with the noobs operating system micro sd card reader then we have a case as well as the Raspberry Pi itself and a quick start guide. Let's take a look at this case. So this is the black version of the Canakit Raspberry Pi case. As you can see, has the little Raspberry logo on top and comes apart very easily. These cases are super easy to install into. You basically just put the Raspberry Pi here and then cover it and cover it. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's bust out our Raspberry Pi. And here we can see the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte. The memory chip is this sort of rectangular black chip right next to the CPU. I did look at this in HTOP and it does show that it is indeed eight gigs of RAM. So pop it in the case, it just sort of slips underneath the little holders like so. This section goes on like that and this section goes on like that. All right, so Pi is now in the case. Uh, you still wanna install your heat sinks and fan though. Here we can see the Canakit Pi 4 black case versus the Canakit Pi 4 white case. I personally prefer the white case, which is the one that comes in the Starter Max Kit. So let's take a look at that next. Now the Starter Max Kit comes with everything that you see here, except they throw in an additional HDMI cable the white Raspberry Pi 4 case instead of the black Raspberry Pi 4 case, and then the micro SD card is a 64 gig micro SD card instead of the 32 gig micro SD card. You hopefully will see that there is so much value in these Canon kits, the Max kit or the Pro kit, both of them come with basically absolutely everything that you need to get set up and running with a Raspberry Pi 4. All right, these kits are awesome, but what can you actually do with an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi? Certainly, it makes using Raspberry Pi as a desktop PC a better experience than the four gig version. I found in my testing that when using the Pi 4 four gig as a desktop PC with dual monitors, kind of like I have set up here, I've got a YouTube video in full screen and then I've got a second monitor over here. But even at 720p, the videos were watchable, uh, but definitely had some latency and stutters. 8 gigs of RAM is certainly gonna help with that, but most people aren't buying a Raspberry Pi 4 to use it for YouTube videos, right? Even some of the smaller Pi projects, such as Pi-hole, don't require more than two gigs of RAM to function effectively. Now, issue 94 of the official Raspberry Pi magazine, MagPi, 
has an excellent article about this called Making the Most of 8 Gigabytes. They detail a number of use cases where the 8 gig of RAM version of the Raspberry Pi 4 can be beneficial. So let's go over some of these use cases. But you know, ultimately, it's up to you to decide if your specific Raspberry Pi application needs this bump in RAM. All right, so first things first, storage cache, right? This is probably the most common one. Having eight gigs of RAM lets you keep more of your files in RAM at any given time. Now, your commonly accessed data can be stored in RAM and you'll still have plenty of room left over for applications. If you don't have enough RAM, your applications are prioritized and your files are discarded from RAM quicker, making them slower to access from your micro SD card or whatever other storage devices you may have connected. This is probably where most heavy Raspberry Pi users are going to see the most benefit from 8 gigabytes. Along those same lines though, you can also set up a RAM disk. So let's say you kept 4 gigs reserved for the OS, you could then create a 4 gig RAM disk. Now a RAM disk is way faster than even the fastest SSDs out there. The only issue with the RAM disk is that any info stored in RAM is lost when the Raspberry Pi reboots or loses power. Having more RAM also opens up some pretty exciting possibilities, such as the ability to load the entire operating system into RAM. There's an option in Raspi config called Overlay FS, which converts the Raspbian system to be read-only and only ever writes changes into memory. Any changes are lost upon reboot, but this is really an exciting option for like kiosks and other similar applications where your Pi basically functions the same way every time it's booted, like for basically really specific applications. Imagine for instance, if you had an application that was similar to those airport check-in kiosks. That would be a perfect use case for storage-free computing. When the Raspberry Pi boots up, it loads the operating system, it loads all needed applications into RAM, it runs its specific application and reads and writes all data from a database in the cloud. So effectively, the Raspberry Pi just becomes an empty shell running a specific application and it can be re rebooted at will since no data is actually being saved or stored onto the Pi itself. And since the entire operating system and all applications are in RAM and running from RAM, it's gonna be super, super quick and responsive for whatever application that it's running. Let's talk about image processing. Now, I don't think the Raspberry Pi is a good substitute for high-end computing when it comes to image processing, but there are some really interesting benchmarks from Magpi which help show the effectiveness of the Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM. When running a Goodsley image compression batch processing job, or basically, a process that compresses high resolution photos into smaller size JPEG images. The process took over 13 hours on a Pi 4 with two gigs of RAM. That same process came down to two and a half hours with the four gig version, and then less than an hour and a half with the eight gig version. So again, not a realistic use case for the Raspberry Pi 4, but it does illustrate just how effective writing to memory is versus having to rely on physical storage. All right, virtual machines. Now I have not tried or even really thought about running virtual machines on the Raspberry Pi. And perhaps that would actually make for a good video, but if you have more RAM, this becomes feasible. Imagine for instance, if you take a very lightweight application for the Pi, such as Pi-hole. Pi-hole runs fine on Raspberry Pi 3, which has one gig of RAM. In fact, one of my two Pi-holes that I run today is currently running on a Pi 3. So imagine that you could potentially have two Pi Hole virtual machines running on a single Raspberry Pi, either as two completely separate Pi Hole DNS servers or perhaps in some sort of like load balance setup. You could give each Pi Hole virtual machine two gigs of RAM, which still leaves four gigs of RAM for the base Raspberry Pi OS. That's not nearly as feasible with smaller amounts of RAM, but with eight gigs, the door is open for these kinds of setups. Finally, let's talk about dual head workstations. One of the most interesting use cases in this Magpi article has to do with dual head, dual user workstations. As I showed in my Raspberry Pi 4 overview video, the Raspberry Pi 4 is actually a decent desktop workstation for clients with minimal usage requirements. You know, general web surfing or just running a single corporate app or something, no problem. But now with eight gigs of RAM, imagine that you could hook up two keyboards, two mice and two monitors to the Raspberry Pi and have each set of keyboard monitor mouse 
be its own separate login to the Pi. So like imagine a library setting where you have a long table full of public user workstations with every two user stations powered by a single Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM. I mean, that sounds awesome and definitely something that I would love to experiment. In fact, I wanted to do just that with my own Raspberry Pi 8 gig while I was testing it for this video. But for the life of me, I could not find any information online other than the one blurb about this in the Magpie article that discusses a dual head workstation. You can find tons of information on dual monitor setups like I've got running right here, but I searched a good long time and I couldn't find any discussion, any tutorials or information at all on how to set up the Raspberry Pi as a dual head workstation. And my Google game is pretty strong, right? So if anyone out there has information about how to set up the Raspberry Pi as a dual head workstation, please get in touch with me. I wanna find out how to do that and I just was not able to find any information out there. Okay, so let me know what you guys think about the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte in the comments below. I would love to hear about your own use cases for a Pi with this much RAM. And also, make sure you click the links below for the new 8 gigabyte can of kits that are going to be available on Amazon shortly, if they're not already available by the time this video releases. Those links are affiliate links, which don't change your price at all, but do get this channel a few extra bucks for the referral, and we absolutely appreciate every referral that we receive. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this initial look at the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabytes, and make sure you like and subscribe and all that sort of good stuff. All right, we will see you in the next video.